establish before they get to the United States? Are we just going to bring in people from Great Britain and Australia? Jim, it's actually, I have to honestly say, I am shocked at your statement that you think that only people from Great Britain and Australia would know English. It's actually, it reveals your cosmopolitan uh, bias to a shocking degree that in your mind, no, this is an amazing, this is an amazing moment. Say, it sounds like so you're trying to engineer the I racial just say, and ethnic flow of people into this country. Jim, this that policy. is one of the most outrageous, insulting, ignorant, and foolish things you've ever said, and for you that's still a really, the, the notion that you think that this is a racist bill is so wrong and so insulting. The president claims that the bill is going to reduce poverty and increase wages, uh, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But Tim, what was your takeaway from uh, what <laughs> happened yesterday, it, uh, other than it, saying, why don't we get cameras it, out of the press Yes, room? it was a very spirited debate between right. two very spirited ideologues on the issue of immigration, and one of those very spirited ideologues happened to be a supposedly objective news reporter for CNN, Jim Acosta. I thought both of them were uh, too rude and too personal, but this is how... Trump. This is why people hate the press. Acosta going in there and saying that because of Emma Lazarus's poem, it's un-American to require immigrants to speak English. Forget, forget about how Steve Miller got personal and obnoxious there. The fact is that Acosta's putting out an argument that very few people hold. He's putting it out sort of obnoxiously. And Miller standing up there knows immigration policy much better than any reporter I know. And so I just thought it was a uh, horror. Let me put it this way. Stephen Miller could have done better. Acosta could not have done worse. John, John Pedoritz yesterday, John Pedoritz on, on Twitter yesterday, I forget your exact tweet, but it was something like, Jim Acosta is doing so horrifically today that I can't believe I agree with him. No, it was something like, was I, it? I, yeah, it was, it was like, uh, Jim, G, you know, I agree with Jim Acosta and he's destroying his own argument with his comportment. So what did you mean, what did you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that, like, I tend, to, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, grandson of, 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 of immigrants. I find it very hard to take a restrictionist policy because if my grandparents hadn't come in, they would have been <coughs> murdered by the Nazis. Um, and so it's it's discomforting to me, um, but you know having having a reporter uh, yammer at a at a White House official by quoting Emma Lazarus's uh, a poem at the base of the Statue of Liberty as though that's the basis for policy, something written in 1883 and we're living in 2017, and like keeping going that was part of it. It was so obnoxious, like. Fine. You know what? If Acosta, <laughs> no, no. I mean, Miller, Miller's obnoxiousness you just showed, which was him saying you're ignorant and stupid and foolish. That wasn't the moment that Acosta, I think, went into terrible territory. Was he was like lecturing Miller, quoting a poem that he doesn't know, so reading it from him, from from his notebook, as though as though he were as though this were like a debate between him. Mm -hmm. And a public official, as, as, though, as, as opposed to being a journalist who was trying to tease out the difficulties and problems with the proposal, uh, which would have been perfectly fine. I will, if you'd, I, ask sub, if you'd I, asked him a substantive question about right. restriction in English and how, uh, you know, immigrants, m many people, studies show that an immigrant can learn right. English in six months. And Jim Acosta should like meet that. someone from Jamaica. I mean, I'm from New York. I know lots of people from Ghana, from foreign countries that speak English. I know 1. lots of people 1.5 billion people on earth, it is said. 1.5 billion <clears throat> speak English. And so, they're not mostly in the UK. Where things seem to really melt down was when Jim Acosta talked, and we're not, we're certainly not putting this on Jim Acosta. It's a, you can watch the clip and choose sides, or just say, as Tim said afterwards, maybe we shouldn't have TVs in the press room after all. But when <clears throat> Jim Acosta used the language of, uh, it seems like your policies are trying to engineer racial and ethnic uh, percentages or something, it sure sounded like something that you would read out of out of like Mein Kampf or something. I mean, talking about your, oh, it looks like you're like engaged in racial engineering and ethnic engineering, or something that we would have accused the uh, the Serbs of doing back in the early 1990s. At that point, it went off the rails. Mm -hmm. Well, this is all of a piece. The policy that the Trump administration announced yesterday, the president's crackdown on uh, Latino gangs. He's 
planning, from what I'm told, to start talking more about building the wall, Trump is pivoting back to the base in a very hard and direct you're saying, way. You're saying he's going to build the wall? <laughs> and Mexico is going to pay for it. But I know after that exchange with Jim McCossie yesterday, they were high-fiving each other behind yes. I mean, Jim McCossie. I'm a huge favor the for the base because that's uh, not only feeding into the narrative about the policy, feeds into <clears throat> the narrative about the press. Right. And at the same time, I'm going to speak in defense of Jim Acosta this morning because I don't think there's anybody on this set who hasn't gotten too personal during this presidency. And I don't think that's just our fault. I think this has been one of the most disturbing moments in history right. to watch this presidency and the, the cacophony of lies just spilling out every day. And that's on the record. Everyone can corroborate them that for themselves. But lost in the conversation yesterday was the policy mm -hmm. because it got so personal and so emotional on both sides. It was it, who, who learned anything well, about and, the policy and, 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 and by the way, that was the problem, Tim. And then I'm going to go to Peter Baker. I wanted to hear the no. policy. I never got a chance to hear the policy because we were hearing speeches. And, and Tim, do you think that if perhaps General Kelly was explaining the policy yesterday, perhaps more people would have listened to him because of his maturity, right. because of his service, because of his, of his sacrifice, because of the respect people have for him. That is something no one has yeah. for Miller so outside Steve, the White Steve House. Miller was put out there for two reasons. One, so that he could pick a fight and he didn't have to pick it. It came to him. Two, he actually does know immigration policy very he well. May. And I'd love to debate the, the specifics because some of his specifics, the general idea of shifting from this lottery and the the very uh, vague idea of family reunification which can include which can mm -hmm. go out almost infinitely right. shifting from that to skills base is good the second half of it which is reducing the sheer number our uh, editorial at the examiner today says we should be skills based we don't have to reduce the number that you really could have Republicans <laughs> having a good helpful debate on this getting some Democrats on board but instead it all gets lumped together into uh, a Stephen Miller policy Warbled, yeah, having an immigration, I agree. Having an immigration policy that focuses on skills, I mean, that's just, that's an 80-20. Uh, but you're right. It's also it, a good debate. It lumps, it lumps some other right parts in there that, that I think a lot of Americans would have problems with. So